Wandering traders are widely considered to be one of the most useless mobs in Minecraft. However, today I'm going to show you how, with the right setup, a single wandering trader can provide you with more than a thousand items per hour that are difficult to get or are otherwise non-renewable. Yes, that's right. With basically just what you see here, it is possible for just one trader to give you stacks upon stacks of items like coral blocks, both types of sand, small drip leaf, blue and packed ice, rooted dirt, slime balls, gunpowder, and so much more. Now, this can be incredibly useful for skyblock, super flat, and peaceful mode players, for whom wandering traders are the only, or the easiest, renewable source of these items, and for players in regular worlds for whom duping is banned, that want an easy way to get renewable sand, corals, and more. In order to do this, I've modified Ian XO4's Voidless Void Trading setup to better accommodate wandering traders, to be more automatic and thus faster to use, and to include a storage system that can handle the volume of your trading. Okay, but what is Void Trading? Basically, it allows you to keep trading with villagers or wandering traders for as long as you like without their trades locking, by unloading the chunks containing said mob while the player has the trading UI open. The player can then purchase or sell as they please, and once they reload the chunk containing this mob, that trade will be available again. The player can then repeat the process as much as they like, allowing them to conduct many, many more trades than would usually be possible in a given span of time. The original void trading is done in the end dimension, hence the name void trading, but in Ian's design, the player moves on rails between two villagers and can trade with both. To adapt this design for wandering traders, I removed one segment. The reason for this is because you want to keep the wandering trader in loaded chunks for as little time as possible. You see, they'll despawn after 40 minutes, so once they spawn in, the clock starts ticking. You cannot stop their despawn timer by putting them in a minecart or a boat, or by name tagging them. That timer only pauses when they're in unloaded chunks, or when their trading UI is open. So, if you find a useful trader, you want to move them into this system, or into a holding area in chunks that are usually unloaded, immediately. I actually think it's most convenient to have this system on the nether roof, as it's easier to transport traders from various areas in your world, and because, if you put it far enough away from the portals you generally use, it's less likely to get loaded than an overworld farm. If I know I'm going to be in a certain area for a while, I put a portal on the nether roof. If I get a trader that spawns in, I can build another portal close by, as it can sometimes be really hard to get traders to go where you want, and it should link up. From there, you can put your trader in a boat, position them right inside the portal, and break the boat. They should go straight through. Once you have your trader in the nether, you can put them in a boat to get them to your farm. Once there, you can move them into this loading bay, making sure they're positioned over the rails. Then, you can break the boat, and press the button on the side of the dispenser to load the trader into a minecart. They'll then go right into position and are all ready to trade with. If you have the resources for a decent amount of rails, you can also put the same loading system anywhere you want in your world. It doesn't have to just be here by the farm. It's actually best to have a loading system right next to a portal that you think you might bring wandering traders through, and to have rails that go from there to your trading system. Remember, the trader's despawn timer is ticking as long as they're loaded, so the faster you get them into this system, the more trades you can perform. That's why I've actually got a version of the loading system that will carry both the player and the trader. You get both of you into moving minecarts, and then keep the trader's UI open as both of you travel to the destination. That way, you can prevent their despawn timer from ticking down during the journey. You can simply connect this set of rails to the main system like this, and the trader will go right in. Once the trader has been relocated to their section of the farm, the player positions themselves on the other end. After you've stocked up on emeralds, you turn around and press this button here to send off your minecart. Now, in the original system, you meet the villager here, and you have to press this button to send off your minecart, and then quickly click the villager to bring up the UI. 
For wandering traders, I've modified the system so the player's minecart will return automatically, which not only speeds up the trading and reduces the manual effort, it also reduces the amount of time the wandering trader spends in loaded chunks. Once the minecart has returned to the other side and come to a complete stop, you can conduct whatever trading you like. Now, you can close the UI and turn around and press that button again to start another trading cycle, but that takes time and manual effort, so I added this mechanism here that will automatically send off the minecart when items move into the storage system. The player can simply place their mouse over the items they want to store and press Ctrl Q to instantly drop everything in those slots. The minecart will be released and you can start trading again. Now, if that amount of delay isn't enough, you can configure it directly from your minecart. Simply turn to this side and increase the number of ticks on this repeater. You can also add more repeaters if you'd like. Another interesting thing is you don't actually have to close the trader's UI before they get loaded again. You can max out one of those trades, wait until you get face to face with that trader again, reload the UI, and all those trades will be available again. So, you don't have to worry at all about adding enough delay or quickly closing the UI before your minecart leaves the station. But wait, there's more! So, I also have this simple encoded trading hall where you can store wandering traders until you're ready to start trading with them. Each trader has a unit at the very edge of a chunk with four chunks between them. That way, when the render distance is set to two chunks, it is impossible for multiple to be loaded at the same time, so traders can be loaded and unloaded into this hull without decrementing the despawn timer of other traders. Then there are two chunks of space between the general line of rails that would go between a remote loading bay and the farm, which means that you can adjust the entry or exit settings for each section without loading any of the traders, as long as the render distance is set to two. You can use levers to switch the settings. If the rails are like this, an incoming trader will go into that holding cell, and if you flick it this way, the trader will go out and into your farm. You can keep the lever like this in case you want to put the trader back. It's also best to keep the lever in that position if you plan on loading more traders into cells down the line, as they'll just keep moving. I also like to put signs in front of each section that note what that particular trader sells, so I don't have to load any of them just to find the one that I want in the future. When you're ready to load a trader into the farm, simply walk forward to this button here, making sure that you've loaded the trader, and give it a press. That line of redstone into a powered block will set the trader off on their way, and if you really want, you could even put yourself in a minecart, accelerate a bit, then click the trader's UI once you've gained speed. All of this ensures that the trader is loaded for the least amount of time possible before getting sent off to the farm. So I'm not going to make a block by block tutorial for the holding bay mechanism because I think it's simple enough to copy. It will be in the world download and I will have a schematic for it, just check the description. But if you do want a full tutorial for this, you can leave me a comment. So these are the materials that you are going to need. So you may need many, many more rails than are listed here if you want to make some remote loading sections. And additionally, you can use chests in place of the shulker boxes. So the first step is choosing a suitable location. Just make sure that you are not building near the spawn chunks or near a chunk loader that might get turned on. Now, the length of the track is going to be 67 blocks long, so just make sure you have enough room. And remember, you can also dig through any hills or mountains or other obstacles in the way. Now, those dimensions are for people in single player mode who have the option of setting the render distance down to two chunks. If you are playing on a multiplayer server or a realm, you are going to need to make the track a little bit longer, so you can check the description for a link to Ian's original video, and he has the dimensions for different scenarios in the description there. Alright. Now we are going to start with the wandering traders section of the farm. So go ahead and press F3 plus G to bring up the chunk borders. Now it doesn't matter what position 
in this direction you put the farm, you just have to have it a specific number of blocks away from the chunk border in this direction. So once you've decided what line you want it to go down, go ahead and place a solid block uh, two blocks away from the edge of the chunk border. Now go ahead and place a powered rail right there, and then three regular rails just like that. Now this is because I noticed that sometimes the wandering trader would get their trades locked because they were traveling too quickly along this section when the whole thing was powered rails. So I found that by slowing them down with a few regular rails solved that problem. So I'm not sure why that only happens sometimes, but I recommend just using regular rails there just in case. Now we are going to go out in this direction until we are another two blocks away from this chunk border. Okay, that should be fine. So we are going to put a solid block there. Now come through here and put a redstone torch there. Um, so we need all of these to be powered except this one, so let's go... no, one more. Nope. Yeah, alright, just like that. And then a another redstone torch or lever or whatever there. And if you are building this in the nether, you want to make sure that everything is spawn-proofed. So cover that block with a glass block or a carpet or a button. Now place a button here and then a powered rail, and then a regular rail, and a detector rail. Now put a repeater right here and set it to three ticks of delay, or click it twice. Now it is very important that the repeater have that much delay at a minimum, otherwise it just will not work. Okay, now take some redstone dust, and let's put that going into the solid block here. Okay, now we are going to put powered rails all the way to the end of the chunk after this one. Okay, just like that. Now we are going to come out 10 more powered rails. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, now put a block there and then another one just like that. And then we are going to go up. One, two, three, four, five. So the last one should be here. And then put a temporary block there and one on top of it. And then put a button there. And let's put powered rails all the way back there. Okay, now get rid of this block here. And then grab a hopper. And put a hopper going into that block like that. Now take a temporary block and put it there and then remove that and put a hopper going into that block and then remove it and then place powered rails on top of those two hoppers and then finish the track just like that. Now let's put some redstone torches or levers along the path. So put a torch there and make sure that the last rail here is not powered but the others are. And then just make sure that the rest of the track is fully powered, so right there. And then right there should do it. All right, so now we are going to do the storage system. So you can press F3 plus G to get rid of the chunk borders if you want. Now come over here and put a double chest there and another one there. Now you can make this as big or as small as you want. I'm just gonna show a kind of smallish storage system. Okay, now put some hoppers going into the back of all of those chests, just like that. Now, if you're in the overworld and you want to expand this, you can just dig down, super easy. If you're in the nether and that's a little bit harder, you can make this taller and have more vertical room for your chests. Remember that minecarts travel up rails at the same speed that they go on flat rails, so you don't actually lose any speed in this system by adding a little bit of a greater ascent. Okay, now come over here and let's put a hopper going into that hopper there, just like that. And then a powered rail on top of that and a hopper minecart there, just like that. Now let's box this in, so just like that. Okay, 
now come back over here and put a hopper going into there just like that and we're going to put a line of hoppers going in that direction so that should all connect up now it's always good practice to put composters on top of your hoppers to prevent a little bit of lag so yeah your system should look just like that all right so now we are going to add the auto release mechanism so come over here and put a line of blocks any kind of blocks going into that block just like that now put a comparator coming out of that hopper and then a piece of redstone dust a repeater and then dust going into that block there so you need to put in a minimum of five items in order for this to be triggered uh, so if for some reason you are buying less than that, you can replace that hopper minecart with a regular hopper. But the hopper minecart is there because this system will get backed up if you are buying more than 41 items every single trading cycle, which is actually a pretty common use case. So I just wanted to account for a larger volume of trading, but if for some reason you're only buying like one or two things and the auto release isn't working, just replace that minecart with a regular hopper. So now we are going to do the storage system for your emeralds. So place a temporary block there and then a glass block above it and you can break that. Now place a shulker facing in that direction and then a hopper going into it, a shulker on top, a hopper going in like that, shulker on top, and you get the idea. You can basically stack this as high as you like. Now, it is important to leave this glass block here because if the shulkers are facing like this, they're not going to open, obviously. Whoops. So, if you go like that, then you can easily access this from your minecart and restock on your emeralds. Now, if you are in survival and you are having a difficult time adding or removing the shulkers, especially if it's a little bit tall, then you can place a column of glass blocks with some ladders going up like that and when you need to remove your shulkers just climb up press shift to hold yourself in place and then you can easily break them just like this if you do not have shulkers yet we can do a setup with chests so remember the temporary block is above the black back hopper just like that now place a double chest against that block just like that and then a hopper going into it a chest double chest just like that hopper there and you get the idea we can just repeat that as high as you like now you can put your emeralds in the chest here just like this and then whenever you're trading you can just pull them out of here all right now let's build a loading bay so if you are building this next to your farm you can assume that this track here is the regular track for the trader just so you know where to place things so place a dispenser facing towards the track one two three four on the fifth block away then place a piece of glass on top of that a temporary block and then glass to the sides as well as another set of glass to the sides and then put a temporary block there and then a trapdoor and you can get rid of that now place a solid block right there so it should be next to the track and one away from the trapdoor and then place powered rails from the dispenser to the solid block there and the rails will do that that's fine just break that and put a solid block there just like that now you can connect this all the way to your uh to your farm however works for you and your world and final thing is we need to put a button on the side of the dispenser and then load this up with minecarts just like that all right and now you can optionally add an additional section of track for the player to travel along with the wandering trader now if you're going to do that you either need to shift over the loading bay or the track itself by one and then you need to put this little column here and an additional rail on top just like that and then we're going to put a block there just like that okay and then a solid block there and then one on top of it Okay, and then put a regular rail there, a powered rail, 
Uh, and also there needs to be a slight section of raised rails here. Doesn't need to be a specific number, it just needs to be raised. So now we're going to come over it like this and then break that and that and then add regular rails just like that. And then you can get rid of that and replace those. So the reason we're doing this is because you can't just connect a curved rail into a straight line of rails and assume that it will go in the direction you want. Due to Minecraft's southeast rule, a minecar will always travel south or east when there's no clear reason for it to go one way over the other. Unless it goes into a downward sloping rail, then that rail will take precedence and it will go downwards. So that's how we can control the direction the player's minecart will go in this little section here. So the final thing is to add a button there and then get your minecart ready for when a wandering trader spawns in. <laughs> <laughs>